So you guys want to know what I use to film my videos. This is the video for that. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's me, I am Tung, and today I wanna to talk to you guys about the lenses I use to film my videos. As you already know, I have the Sony a7S III to film my videos. That camera is a workhorse and it's probably the best video camera that I have. Now, the Sony a7S III is my first real entry to full frame world. Prior to this, I was using the Fujifilm X-T3 and X-T4 to film my YouTube videos. But because of the way I film, usually on the go, usually without much time to set up my shots, I thought the Sony a7S III could help improve to make my videos a little bit better. So since this is a full fairing camera, I knew the lens could be expensive if I, if I went the Sony G Master route or buy anything native. But what I like about the Sony E-mount system is the mount and the variety of lenses you have out there. You have the support from the likes of Tamron and Sigma and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Starting with the ultra wide lens right here, this bad boy right here the Tamron, the Tamron. So I wanted an ultra wide lens because I wanted to cover everything from the wide end. I knew I was going to travel, so I wanted to capture the entire landscape. I just thought the 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 G Master was too expensive and too heavy. And the 16 to 35 millimeter F4 didn't provide uh, enough light because of the constant uh, aperture at F4. Here comes this lens, the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8. I thought this lens made total sense for me and I got a very good deal on it. I paid 900 uh, Canadian dollars. It's small and it's lightweight and it's uh, great for gimbal work because the barrel doesn't extend. Everything is internal. Look at that. When I, when I do this, a perfect uh, companion for anyone who does a lot of traveling and wants to keep their kit very light. The image that I get out of this uh, lens is fantastic and sharp. The autofocusing with this lens is sticky. I have no problems with the autofocusing pulsing back and forth like I did when I used to shoot with the Fujifilm X-T4. I use this lens to get stock footage, to film my BTS, and client work. I worked with a couple of painting companies back in Toronto and usually they needed content for their website, such as photos and videos. Their job sites are usually houses. So I find that this ultra wide lens is great for this type of situation. Because spaces are tight and the lighting is limited, the ultra wide focal length allows me to operate in tight spaces and make everything look grander. And the constant aperture of f2.8 allows me to film in dimly light situations, which are usually the house, these houses. The second lens I use, and it's a general purpose lens, and it's the lens that I use the most, is the Sigma 28 to 70 F2.8 DG DN. DN stands for these nuts. <laughs> it's a joke. If you don't follow this Sony YouTuber, you don't know what I'm talking about. But look at this bad boy right here. The Sigma, the Sigma 2.8 constant 28 to 70. This lens is amazing for the price. Um, it's so good, it's also small and lightweight and it's something that I also look for when I'm filming. Because I'm always thinking of traveling and being out and about while I'm filming, this is the lens that I would bring. The image quality, I can't complain and I hope with the footage that I show you with this lens, you'll see how great it is. If there was one thing I wish this lens did was just, just be a little bit longer in the focal length. I while I was filming for the painter dudes, I noticed that 70 millimeter isn't close enough to get me the detail shots. But other than that, I love the image I get. The autofocusing I find isn't as good as Tamron. I feel that it's not as sticky, but it's still good. But there are times where I wish that it would focus a bit faster like the Tamron. This lens is also dust and water resistant. And I find the price of this lens is a great value. You get a great image, uh, the general focal lengths to tackle mostly everything that you need. Autofocusing is good. And I paid roughly around 1200 Canadian dollars for it. And it comes with a five year warranty. And I don't really care about the four millimeters you get on the wide end to make it a 24 to 70. I can make that up with my Tamron. And having a 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 would make the kit so much heavier. And I'm not a fan of that, especially for video where I'm always traveling. I'm looking at what I do, which is uh, moving around so much. And it's always 
it always it always changes like I'm not in like a studio set or anything like that where I can just take my time so I just need something light and quick and then I'm out of here to just you know film what I need to film you guys are probably going to ask but Tung like you shoot you shoot Fujifilm why didn't you keep it in the family and the answer to that is I wanted to <laughs> I really I really wanted to keep it in the family but I find that the autofocusing totally unreliable for video this this is I'm talking about my X-T4 that I used to own for photography it's great you can get like sharp images like crazy uh, but on the video side the uh, autofocusing would always pulse back and forth and overall it was kind of embarrassing to see those pulses in videos I just remembered um, delivering like social media content to my friend who's a uh, a foodie influencer and I just thought oh man th this footage looks so bad because of all the pulsing and that's uh, what kind of uh, pushed me into another direction which is Sony because I hear I always hear Sony has like good like amazing autofocusing with their eye tracking with their autofocusing tracking uh, with this camera right here I can just push on my uh, on my touch screen on my back LCD screen and then it will it will it will draw a box on an object and it will stay in that focus while you move around. And I find that tool um, very reliable and useful for what I do. And hopefully the Fujifilm X-H2 and the X-H2S cleans that up because I still want to keep it, I, I still want to keep things in the family, but Sony's autofocusing tracking is just too good and their lens options has been fully built out. Their third party options work well and they're coming in at an affordable rate sometimes. Cheaper than cheaper than some Fujifilm lenses. It just seems like that was the route that I should go. And at the end of the day, just choose the just choose the right tool for the right job. And I thought Sony had everything right for video. But if there was one thing I could add to my video kit is I'm looking for I'm looking to get a tighter lens. I want to get like an 85 or a 135 just so I can get those detail shots. I noticed that it was something lacking on my end so I would like to have something like that so I can get a variety of shots and keep uh, the videos interesting. Uh, but yeah, those are my two lenses that I use on my videos most of the time. Both have good autofocusing, both produce fantastic image quality and both are coming in at an affordable price. And both are small and compact, which I love. I love small and compact lenses so much. My back, my back loves it and I love it. <laughs> Everything you've seen on this channel has been shot with primarily these two lenses. And as always, I'm going to leave the links to my gear down below if you want to check that out and support the channel. But yeah, what are your thoughts on the Sigma and Tamron lenses? I think they're great lenses. And I'm super excited that Fujifilm is finally playing nice and allowing them to make lenses for the Fujifilm X-Mount. Don't forget to follow me on my socials at IamTung. That's where you're going to see a lot more of my work. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, my name is Tung, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Okay, bye. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness.